Folks, you know what time it is? Magic can make you jump. 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 I know, that's my attempt at humor today. Hope everyone's having a fantastic day. My name is Timmy. You're watching Rudy's Investments. Today we're going to crack some packs from my patron, Dr. M. Last name, Moore. So I believe uh, Dr. Moore over here is uh, a pretty lucky individual. We're going to see how things unfold today. And um, simply put, um, we want to see if we look get any misprints on the triple box opening of the old, look at that, of the old jump start. Or are we going to hit actually um, <clears throat> some of these crazy like $30, $80 cards, you know? Starting off with some Kira glass spinner in a very nice island. So that that's really what the stuff is. These jumpstart things are crazy, man. This was this is one of the things that Rudy definitely got wrong in 2020. Ugh, Harvester of Souls. Terrible flipping card. Oh my goodness. Think of, wasn't that a free like welcome deck card? Holy smokes, that was a weak card. Anyways, heavily armored. Here we go. Looking for some crusade and no misprints or funkiness. Nice shield on the ground. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of where the big money is. I don't. I've noticed at least in you know this is video number five out of ten. Uh, big old whale and oh and a, a whelming wave. So at least that one has uh, two rares. Um, from what I gather, the second wave though, the quantity of people getting misprints is extremely low compared to the first time around. Big old towering titan in assault formation. Very very nice one on that one. There's a nice pool on that wall pack. Uh, but boy, I can't believe the price of some of these singles. Like, I'm assuming... Ah, uh, Shackle Geist, we know. Ah, uh, it's terrible. Is that the only one? Is, is Spirits the only pack that has no variants ever? I feel like there's like a couple packs that are just blah, no variants, nothing. And discarding. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Tiny Bones are ready. Absolutely phenomenal pull. Look at that. Probably the best pull of the box so far. Holy crap. Very nice early on pull there in the first eight packs. We got Reanimated and Rise of the Dark Realms. Okay. There's a different variant. I have not seen that. I swear, what was that? M12, M13, M14? Mythic? It's been a long time since I've seen that card. That's pretty cool. Okay. Still seeing in some elf action with the Crater Hoof Behemoth and Old Man Rudy. Very, very nice. Holy crap. Behemoth already. Flipping tiny bones already. Holy smokes. We got ourselves a very discarding. There we go. Liliana's Reaver for a different one. There's another good. Not quite as good as the... Holy crap. Okay. Very... Jeez, this is a... Holy smoke, this is a strong... Dinosaurs, Primal Hunger. and By the way, that uh, that uncommon um, uh, Bronton on there uh, still is pretty good, by the way. Always has, always. I remember selling that. What was that, Conspiracy 2? Or was that Ixalan? I can't remember. Doctor, Speaker of the Heavens, and that is it. And a nice little planes hidden back there. Yeah, we haven't seen, uh, I don't, it sounds like we might go through all 10 box openings here before I run out. And we may not see any misprints. I was really hoping to see something cravy. Think cravy. Thinking of craviness. Now, I thought for sure we would get something, but it looks like we're getting good pulls. But it looks like we are not going to experience any of the crazy myth misprints on camera. Which was something I was really looking forward to. I was really hoping we would see one of those. I've seen people show me. They don't even have to open the pack. Like the entire pack. Just completely just like smeared ink and messed up. Angel of Dire Hour. Very nice. It's funny too. You can tell these cards are printed at different locations. Like this is definitely a different manufactured product. It even smells different. Witchcraft with Rudy's ex-girlfriend there. And Witch of the Moors. Still a nice little deck there. Love that Jumpstart Swamp, though. That's a really neat one. But he can, and by the way, we've only I've only seen two Phyrexian packs out of all four of the previous videos. Isn't that crazy? Archive Keeper. And, uh, boy, that Phyrexian pack is really tough to get, everybody. Goodness gracious. I mean, this is video number five. Only two of the last four videos. Baneslayer, very cool. Two of the last four videos had one Phyrexian. That is a really, that is a really tough pack to get. I love how the Chandra, oh wait, boom, Heart of Fire. Very nice, and a nice little Fire Sliver Chick there. And a nice M21 Mountain. You know, I like seeing the Showcase Mountain, but again, it just feels weird to me that you, the crossover, it just feels weird. Another Crater Hoof. Holy crap, two 
Crater Hoof Elf decks in the same box with a Tiny Bones. Wow. Okay. All right. That's pretty cool. Above the Clouds, another Kira. That was our very first pack here we opened today. That's pretty neat. Obviously, as you guys can tell, I got a lot quicker opening these packs. You got to, there's a little style to kind of uh, doing these things real quick. Predatory with a dire hunt. This is just some of these cards. I'm not complaining about the cards. It's just, it's weird to do a Core 21 box opening a few weeks back and see the same cards in the set after it or another. It's just, it's just weird. Love that um, Kells Fight Fixer. She's got that evil, hot looking good, like Power Woman. Man, she looks awesome. That artwork. Just love that. Reminds me of Lily. Absolutely fantastic. Last pack. Oh, we're stuck on this one. Last pack and box one. Everybody heavily armored with a crusade there and, of course, a planes. Box one, total success. No complaints. Absolutely not. Not even the slightest complaints on how good that box opening went. I mean, when you get those kind of pulls, when you hit a Tiny Bones, two $20, $30 crater hoofs alone, I mean, isn't Tiny Bones like 30 bucks? Or it was 30 bucks. So between that and the three Crater Hoofs, aren't those three cards already over $100? Like, that's nuts. Like, that is crazy, you know? All right, Primal Might for the first appearance of the day and the Rampaging Bronstadani action. All right, not a bad little dino pack. Wondering if we're going to see a Phyrexian action. I'm also wondering if we're going to see any of the old uh, $80. What is that elf guy? Look at that. Good old Ghoul Caller. God, good old Commander one there. Man, when that card came out, was it 2014 or 2015? 2016? Oh, man, that was such a hot card. Doctor again, Speaker of the Heavens, and no misprints. Yeah, it's just really weird to see these things. What a different change in uh, minions. Another Kells looking great. And another Swampy. So box two starting off a little bit slower today. Um, I think, you know, it's funny because... People don't really ask me much about this product. Phyrexian Tower. Okay. I didn't even know you could get that in this product, but that's interesting. Um, it's funny. I, I still, I don't know. When you get more people asking you questions about just, you know, what do you think the price of the boxes are going to go up versus the actual cards in the set, it, it definitely, I don't know, it still makes me very skeptical of Jumpstart as a whole. The product is a good product. I'm not going to, I'm not going to downplay the product or the concept of it. And based on the success of Jumpstart, I can assure everybody there's going to be another Jumpstart in the future. I can 100% assure that. Based on the success level is just through the roof. But of course, you know, Rocks, Faith Mender, really? Was that a core? Was that a 2013 core set? The problem is it's very difficult to tell how successful this set is because of the supply problems. Discarding Liliana's Reaver. And again, very nice. Love that. That's kind of swamp and that one looks really cool. All right, so we're ha we're approaching halfway through box two. Still have not seen Mr. $80 Elf. Another Tiny Bones. Are you kidding? Back-to-back -back Tiny Bones in this box opening. I wasn't even aware of Tiny Bones in the uh, the first couple videos. We didn't even get a Tiny Bones. I think until, what, video three? That was crazy. And now we've gotten two. And another Kira Glass Spinner. That's our third flipping Kira already. That's quite fast. Okay. And smashing for the volcanic salvo action there. And a nice little mountain volcano. Hmm. See, that's the thing. It's just, it's just difficult to tell some of these things just because of the supply problems skew everything. It makes it, you know, so it feels like Jumpstart's like this best success ever. But then again, is it only that successful because of the drama around the supply problems, you know? Tree hugging and a soul of harvest. Flipping welcome deck card. At least you get a Vernon Brain. You get something else with it. Ah, like so weird. How do you reprint old cards, have crazy new cards, and then some packs have welcome decks? Plus one, Branching Evolution, very cool card. Champion of Lamp, very cool card. See, it's just, it's so crazy. That, like, how do they choose what cards they print in the, in like reprint? It's so weird to me. Dogs for the pack leader, and I oh, love that artwork. And the old hound action, beautiful doggy planes artwork there. I just, I don't understand how they choose. <laughs> I don't get how Wizards chooses some things. Plus one for the Prime of the Bounty. Very good pull there, everybody. Very, very nice pack there. See, I don't know. I, I just truly don't know Wizards mentality. Look at that. Mr. T coming through. Very solid. Very solid. And a core 21. Very nice. Holy smokes, that was nice. Okay. 
So I guess anything to do with like a planeswalker, whether it's Mr. T or Mrs. Chandra or anything, I, I guess Goblin Shiftman and a Goblin Goon. Don't even remember that card. Okay, that seems a little bit different for me. Um, it seems like certain ones, like what? Why do they make that? Is like, do they choose like? I don't, I don't know. Whatever. Well, I guess I'll move on from that because it's not really an answerable question. I just don't understand how they. Why are some packs not? There's no variance to them. But then other packs have like four different versions. Shouldn't they all be like some equal version? Vampires with Vito's Italian pizza there. Ooh, I just saw a blood artist in the middle there. Didn't know that was in there. See, I don't even look at blood artists the same anymore because I know it's got a secret layer. Like, I feel like reanimate, actually get reanimate on that version. Very cool. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy how it changes perspective of everything? It's just really spooky. Black market. Love it, love it, love it. And a nice little spooky, looks like Innistrad graveyard there. Very, very cool. All right. And last but not least, some box two. Well read with a Sphinx little keeper action and some books in the ocean. Right into box three as we are blazing through some action today. Uh, box two was a little weaker than box one. Box one just, oh my god, those crater hoofs. And, I mean, well, I mean, still, multiple tiny bones and, I don't know, pretty tough video to beat today. Don't think we're really going to be able to have a bad opening here. Unless, unless box three is a dumpster fire, I mean, kind of a pretty solid one here today. Plus one coming right out of the gate. Nice little bounty action. Very nice. And you know what? I'm starting to think we may not see any actual misprint cards on this wave two. Because I have not... Like, I, I, only one patron claimed that he had a bunch of misprints from the boxes I had on wave two. It's a towering Titan and Assault Formation. But I know on wave one, uh, quite a bit of patrons on the hundreds of boxes I sold, they show me some pictures that there were definitely a couple misprint packs throughout there. Enchanted for a Johnny's Chosen. Boy, I haven't seen that card in a long time. Celestial Mantle. Man, that brings back memories. Very nice planes there, too. Very cool pack on that one. See, it definitely just... The the errors have definitely been reduced big time. Garouk coming through! Look at the Garouk! Uh, core 21 Mythic and a Core 21 Rare. And a Core 21 Specialty Land. Like, it's neat and all, but is anybody else going to say it? Wizard action with some summoner. Terrible, terrible. It's just weird to me. I'm sorry. It's just weird, everybody, that I'm cracking a, a newer set, and I'm getting cards from the newest standard set. That's I, I just It's weird to me. Double vision action. So I just... It, it's... And, well, didn't Jumpstart come out before Core 21? Or were they exactly the same time? To, I thought Jumpstart came out slightly before Riptide Laboratory. Wasn't that like flippant onslaught era? Holy crap, that's an old card. Like that's that. I, okay, all right. Um, I don't know what. Okay, who knows? Minotaur is very nice. First time I've, we've seen some Minotaur action today. Well, we're down to the last about fifteen packs here. I was hoping to see a very expensive eighty to hundred dollar little elf druid man, but it looks like we are not going to be hitting that here. Pirates. And Corsair, what is that artwork? Like, what does he do? Like, I don't know. I don't like that. The artwork is terrible. It just looks like, it just doesn't, I don't see details. It just looks very flat. All right. Anyways, moving forward here. Hoping to see a couple spicy things in the clothes. Another flipping whale, really? Yeah. All right. Yeah, see, that's the thing. It's like, I feel like Jumpstart is deemed a huge success. But the problem is, so you know they're already working on a second one. They probably got the green light already. But I guess the issue is we don't really know truly how would Jumpstart be different if it was a regular supplied product like Modern Horizons in, you know, what, 2018 or 2019, whenever that came out. Hey, look at that. Oh, Bruvac, the grandparents. First time we've seen this cool card today. Very nice pool on that one. Love that island, by the way. Okay. See, that's, that's the thing is, you know, it's very difficult to tell when a product has art like that supply problem from the company. Spooky with Liliana's action, huh? You know, I mean, because I have a funny feeling if the supply was truly maxed out and the price tanked, would anybody care? See? There's our girl Lily coming through with the standard bear and the core 21. Is it Lily? Yeah, it's the 21 version too. Uh, I don't know. It is what it is, everybody. It's just, it's very awkward to me. Unicorns, look at that. Look at that. 
the Blessed. Flippin' amazing Unicorn Mythic. One of the best packs in Jumpstart you can get. Absolutely fantastic pool again. Holy crap. Coming through with some Wizards action. Brian from Tolarian, keeping an eye on me because I do shady things apparently. And here we are to the last eight packs. Here we go, folks. Here we go with a plus one and another branching evolution. Very cool and a nice forest. Well, it looks like we're not going to be hitting that crazy $80 elf card today, but we did get a lot of behemoths, a lot of tiny bones, Mr. T's, we got lilies. We had a lot of good stuff, though, everybody. Not a bad box opening at all. A lot of good cards, a lot of good pools. Again, I, I don't know the financial value of this stuff because I feel like it's not really accurate because of the supply bottleneck. So, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you can, I guess you could flip the cards now because everything's so, I don't know. And Wizards keeps claiming... Man, there's a little taunter action. Haven't seen him all day. You know, Wizards keeps claiming they're going to fix. There's going to be plenty of supply and months and months keep going. I mean, how I, I'm starting to get very scared. That's our third or fourth branching evolution this video. That is a lot of branching evolutions. Okay. See, I, I'm actually starting to think the market's going to get pretty shocked. Witchcraft and Rudy Zax. All right, all right. I think the market might get a little jolt when it realizes that. There's a real chance as we move into next year, if they don't get the supply problem fixed, it may not. Serendib, really? Okay, in a Sphinx? I think there's a real chance that the, the supply at Jumpstart never gets corrected and the prices never fully go back down. Reanimated. Do we get Mr. Reanimate on the cover? We do not. We get Mr. Grave Walker and the Scourge. And that is it, folks. No errors, nothing. Uh, Dr. Moore, thanks for being a very kind patron and not bad in the pools. Don't know the financial value because it's very skeptical because of supply problems, but you know what? Can't really complain about multiple tiny bones, multiple behemoths when those things are like 30 bucks a pop. So thanks for watching, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Make sure you enjoy Magic the Ugly Owing. Life's too short to be unhappy. Go outside and, I don't know, go touch something. Have a great day.